Mothering Sunday to all our mothers in the house. Good morning, beloved in Christ. It's a good day to be alive, healthy, and happy. And I pray we always be joyful in God's presence. In Jesus' name. Please be seated and let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the grace. Sorry. Excuse me, please. We thank you for the grace this day to celebrate mothers and for the grace given us to play our roles well. You have placed the job of building our home squarely on our shoulders and we thank you for the enablement to do just that. Speak to us once again this morning. Energize us so that your glory may shine through us and your name be glorified. May the words of my mouth this morning minister grace and health and comfort and peace to the hearers. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to start by singing one of the mother's songs made popular by uh, Umbanga, Nikos Umbanga. But I'm going to sing my own version of it. So let's listen carefully. Sweet mother, I no go forget you For this love way you shower on me Sweet mother, I no go forget Sorry, <laughs> sorry my voice is acting up this morning For this love, please, let's listen to my version Not for far For this love way you shower on me so we start again. Sweet mother, I no go forget you. For this love way you shower on me. Sweet mother, I no go forget you. For this love way you shower on me. When I dey cry, my mother go carry me. He go say my picking. Waiting, you they cry, yo, yo, stop, 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 make me no cry again, no. Sorry, if I love we women, we go sing and finish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if I no sleep, my mother no go sleep. If I no chop, my mother no go chop, eh? She no day tired, sweet mother. For me, yeah, sweet mother. Sweet mother, oh, we love you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I always like to re-emphasize that because I found mothering a very joyful and uh, uplifting assignment. I never thought of it as suffer. And that is why I always like to clarify it when I have the opportunity to do so. Because when you look at it as suffer, that is when you begin to cause the children that the Lord has blessed you with and to diminish them rather than raise them up. <clears throat> we care for them lovingly. It's a job we enjoy doing. And that is why you had all the mama and mama. <laughs> Praise God. You had our children. I think it started with the, uh, the Reverend Julius Badejo um, this morning when uh, he, he eulogized the women and uh, our children in their ministering today. In their ministry today, re emphasized it. God has deposited so much in us as women. And I really want to thank you. I really want to celebrate each and every one of us, especially our men here in Wesley Chapel, Lekki in particular. They always honor us every year. Thank you. They always have surprises up their sleeves for us. And we've never been disappointed. And I know we won't be today either. May God continue to bless you all. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to start with the New Testament reading this morning. And um, I will look at the foundation of the faith of the Methodist Church. There are, there are three. And it says, people are by nature dead in sin. This was emphasized in the first three verses of Ephesians chapter 2 that we read. Said, so it means the, uh, the foundation of the faith of Methodist Church is biblically based. We as women, uh, as humans, we are dead in sin and we always want to gratify the desires of the flesh. We follow the mindset of the world that says heaven help those who help themselves. And this has culminated in greed, covetousness, lust, and inordinate ambition, unhealthy competition, anger, wrath, malice, tumult, and worse. We know what is happening in the world we are in today. The second foundation is that we are justified by faith alone. Faith in Christ and in the Father, our God. And this is captured in verses 4 to 9. That by grace, the grace of God freely given to us, not because we have earned it, not because we deserve it, but it is purely by the love and mercy of God. And it is desire that we reign with him in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. So we are reminded of what we have received, not just the gift of goodness, but the gift of life. And we have escaped death and received salvation through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And the final one, verse 10, is faith produces inward and outward holiness. Holiness leads to good works. And that verse 10 is our text today, which says, So, <clears throat> which says the, that God has created us and saved us to do good works, which he has prepared for us from the beginning of time. So, our theme is Arise and Build, which is the Methodist theme for the year 2024. And the sub-theme is Equip Yourself for the Good Works. Women, Equip yourself for the good works. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 tells us that it takes wisdom to build a home and the responsibility lies squarely on the shoulders of the woman. A wise woman builds her home, but the foolish one um, destroys it. So, What this says is that we, as women, we are not second-class citizens, but we have a great responsibility on our hands. God views us as being wise and righteous and community builders, not just homes alone, but our community. And each decision we take, we either build us up build the family, build the community, or as a foolish woman, it can undermine us, the family, and the community. So, I'm going to now use the words of Proverbs chapter 31 from verse 10 to 31. We all know it, the virtuous woman, to tell us how God has equipped us to do good works. The first thing is our faith in God. To fear the Lord is to have faith in him. And Proverbs uh, 31 verse 10, uh, verse, um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I missed up the back. Tells us that a, 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 a good woman is, fears the Lord and others are homestead according to that. So the fear of the Lord makes us to seek his face before we take any decision. 
and to rely upon him and be obedient to his, lead, um, to his leading. And this was demonstrated by Nehemiah when he stood before the king. And the king asked him or uh, men, commented about his sad face and asked what he wanted to do. And he said, I prayed to the God of heaven. It wasn't a binding and casting prayer. It was just a prayer from the heart. Silent, quick. And it was a reinforcement of the fasting and prayer that he had done previously when he had of the state of, um, of Jerusalem. And this prayer, this very short and quick prayer, gave him clarity to know what to ask for and also granted him favor. Beyond his imagination, in the sight of the king, we as women, we are prayer warriors. We pray all the time, in and out of season, just quietly. I will quickly paraphrase Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. Woman is a jewel of inestimable value. The virtues cannot be quantified. Our words are far above precious stones or anything imaginable. Women are trustworthy. Verse, 10, verse 11 in, of that Proverbs at once says, Our husbands are safely trust in her. Because she will always consider the welfare and the good of her husband. And by extension, the family. Three, woman is diligent. Hardworking, intelligent, and proactive. She's an astute businesswoman. She sees opportunities and grasps them. She also knows the need of her family and works to ensure that they are met. You saw how the children stated them one by one. Before she sleeps, she has prepared, my children are going to school tomorrow, the uniform is ready, what am I cooking for them? Very, very um, articulate and... Um, um, orderly. So, she prepares ahead for emergencies, empowering and equipping herself to fill the gaps and to support her husband at home, in business, and in community. She is never idle. She has grit. She has stamina. She keeps going at her task to accomplish, accomplish her desire. She's also tenacious and multitask. Just yesterday, I was at an event, and the lady, the professional girl, retired. By the time I got to the front, I'd turned into a photographer. And most of the pictures that were taken, you know those ready to wait and get, they will bring it to you while you are still seated there. She took most of them and brought it to people. And she did an excellent job of it. I actually parted with about 10,000, just collecting all the pictures she took of me and other people around me. That is the woman. They build up their wealth in bits and pieces, but they build it up. They are not going for this quick, long haul. I, on Monday, I spoke about the woman who used to sell corn at the corner of her street. When it's corn season, she's, the whole street, we hear her. As soon as the corn season has gone, she turns into the seller of akara. If beans becomes expensive, she's frying yam, plantain, whatever. That is a woman for you. Beats up her wealth in bits and pieces. And then, like I mentioned, she multitasks. She can combine home, family, study, career, even while carrying a pregnancy, effortlessly. She's an enigma. You can't fathom how she does it. But the godly woman, she is imbued with such power, and she does everything well. 
Six, she is generous, an embodiment of love. She treats her household well, including servants and strangers. Her hands are open to the strangers who come to her door. Three, she chooses her words carefully. A virtuous woman, a man who depends on God, will not eulogize evil. They will not say false that maybe their forefathers have committed and gloat over it. You know, some will tell you, ah, if we hear about our, uh, this thing. No, they don't take nonsense. Some will even praise the father who is an adulterer. Ah, if we see the number of uh, wives and concubines, your children are listening to those things. And you don't know which will grow seed in them. In future, such behavior may manifest in any of them. Or you are boasting of a man who is a warrior, who, who beats off everybody in the streets. You discover that in such families, you may end up just having somebody who loves fight, simply because the woman has carelessly just eulogized what is not good. Some is um, various kind of um, negative things that our children imbibe from our, from our conversation. This will not happen with a woman who trusts the Lord. It said our husband and children stand out. They are recognized in the community because the blessed, our blessedness and our works is made manifest for all to see. She is praised not just by her family alone, but by the entire community. She allows the Lord to guide her. She obeys his direction. She is submissive and loving. And this brings about a positive reaction from her husband who reciprocates by protecting her, defending her, and empowering her to do more. If we pay, pay close attention to most homes where there are turmoil and hardships, it is simply because the men or, or the, both the husband and wife are not working harmoniously. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 6 says, Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him. That is to show harmony. The man, the king was not granting Nehemiah's favor, request without the knowledge of the wife. No. The it may have even been the woman that pointed out, ah, see your wine bearer, what is the issue? Before the king asked, that harmony must always be there. I will sing one uh, Yoruba song by Ebenezer Obey that uh, um, talks about this. It says, Toko taya emajam, taya toko emajam, nituri ulu. Lowo, Oluron, Lowo, Oluron, Lowo, Laje, Furawa, Oluron, Lowo, Oluron, Lowo, Oluron, Lowo, Laje. Says husband and wife, don't fight. You are helpers for each other. That's just what that um, song says. And I mentioned here once before that when God created Adam, he decided that Adam could not do it alone. He needed a helper. And so he created woman from his rib, which means they are the same. From his rib, they were supposed to support each other, to cohabit harmoniously, and to work together in a position of strength. Unfortunately, this was undermined by the, the, um, the, the serpent deceiving the woman who ate the forbidden fruit. And that is why the Ephesians passage we read said, we are dead in sin because it has affected all humans from that time on. Now, one of the punishments that God pronounced on the woman is your desire shall be 
for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And this has been manipulated by the devil, by the man, to, and misinterpreted to mean that the woman should be under the feet of the man. When this kind of thing happens, when the woman is suppressed, when is brutal, she's brutalized and pulverized, there cannot be peace in that home. There cannot be joy. There cannot be progress. But then, let the woman play her role, her God-given role of being submissive to the man. I have discovered that the submissive woman is a powerful woman. She has all the strength. And I always like to tell us that submissiveness and being downtrodden are not the same. They are two different things entirely. Respect your husband, honor him, but please don't let him trample upon you. Do your role and it will be well with you. And husbands, appreciate whatever your wife is doing. Don't say it is her responsibility. It is not. Regardless of the kind of work or the kind of money the husband earns and brings in, it's not going to buy love and harmony. It's not going to buy peace. It's not going to buy joy. So, all I'm going to say to us today is that we women, even as we build and get ourselves prepared for the job that the Lord has called us to do, let our men also be there to support us. We are partners in progress, not antagonists, not we work for the same purpose. So I will just say this morning, happy Mothering Sunday to us women. Whether you're a mother or an aspiring one, be strong, be diligent, build your home, community, and the world with the fear of God. Not only will your home be established, but the world at large. And as we hear the United Methodist Church theme for the year 2024, unbounded love, you will have abundant life in Christ. You will thrive. You will arise and build to God's standards in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the words we have received today. Thank you for creating women so beautifully and wonderfully. Thank you for the strength given us to uphold and sustain the, the world that you have given to us. And we always draw our wisdom and strength from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.